So we have to think about sets when we think about the broadcasting system here. And that is places, a set is any place that's good to record. And a bunch of those are just in the forest. A great place to record is just in the woods. I need deep shaded spots. Um, I need uh, chairs. I need uh, flat spots that, that are on the map that we know are good for uh, talking to people. Because also the more people we get here, like I want this to be fairly quiet around the view anyway, but down at the lodge, it's going to be noisy and hard to record at certain times. Uh, any wall, anywhere, should be painted to be something that is useful for broadcasting. Any wall, anywhere. It's cheap to do. It's a creative task people love. It can be painted in a way that is in tune with that, especially under any covered porches. Um, We need a space in, inside that we can record even at night. And that section of the building needs to have an earth roof. So we can have a line of earth roof, make a, make a big line of it. And maybe right near it, right next to it, have a spot, that, a big polycarbonate thing. And maybe there's a big earth roof thing with rooms on the other side of that. Now, that's an odd use of land. It'd be cooler if it was a Wally Peeney and it was dug in. Uh, but the earth roof part of it is because the rain is so noisy here. There's rain right now. And sometimes it just thunders down. And that's a great time when it's so rainy out. If you had the battery power, the electrical power, then you might as well be editing video or doing things inside. And so we want to provide inside space that is protected from outside space. We may even want to soundproof it because somebody might want to sit at a desk, right? In, inside the thing, we could have even, even green screen behind them. You know, some of them could be green screen. We could hang uh, cloth tapestries behind them. You can buy them in Morelia and you can buy them all over the world. Easy way to make a set. And we're mainly looking at talking head here. We could set up spaces for two people talking head. That's fine. Look, look at everybody's set online and then have rooms that you can set up as a permanent set or change it. And I mentioned straw bale between them because these don't have to use that much space. We can have lighting above, LED lighting, right? This is, this is all assuming electrical power and that we have a controlled place. And you know, in the door, or depending on which way you're facing, uh, you could have lighting. You don't make it too small. But the point is that, you know, I mean, in fact, I mean, it is difficult because straw bale uses up so much space. Um, straw bale is not the thing holding the building up mostly. It's mostly infill. So you could do a concrete structure and then infill it with non-load bearing straw bale for audio purposes. And then in the room, you could even put audio dampening stuff. The point is to don't have it be bouncy noise. Um, so you want to cover the walls and, and audio stuff. And somebody should check all this. I'm just making all this up. But essentially a video booth. We'll call that a video booth. And they could come in all sizes for all purposes. We would want to figure out what we need. I would also like to have a courtyard that is outdoor, that has by its side uh, a covered area that has an earth roof. Again, that's for audio, okay? Because if I put polycarbonate, which is what I want to put in a different place, the noise of that is like a drum. And so we have to design these spaces for better filming. Now the courtyard, um, could have covered spaces, perhaps with tile. Tile's not that annoying. And so for perhaps by the edges of it, we could have little roof, rooflets, tiny roofs, that it's tile. And we could have various spaces around this courtyard. I don't know how big it would be, but it has to have easy electricity everywhere. It has to have a whole bunch of lighting options so that we can shoot early in the morning we can shoot 
late at night. We can have a fire there or three fires, big enough for three fires. I want it to be big enough for three, three campfires. And all around the edge of it, I want something to look cool in some kind of way. And I don't want it to have an element that's so big that you can identify where it is perfectly. I want to be able to change its look a lot. That could even include potted plants that we can use as visual barrier. I don't want a big sculpture of something in there. We could use angles really well. Perhaps even have a central element that is all mural that we can change over time. A triangular thing. I don't know. Have a big mirror. The reason I have the earth roof thing next to it is so that there's a shaded spot out of the rain to be. So right in there we've got a, a comfortable spot that's not out there. Because out there is going to be a cool place, but we need to be have the inside place be good as well. And there should even be a stove there for cooking. Why not? That's the courtyard. Now the courtyard doesn't have to be connected to the other parts of the broadcasting studio. That could be independent. And it could have other completely enclosed rooms next to it. What it has to have is electric, a place that's quiet, because the courtyard is exposed to noise, right? And noise happens around here. And so that would be a very interesting one to put somewhere else. And maybe those rooms that I mentioned should be, uh, you know, there should be a manager that manages it, that sleeps there, make a room big enough for a couple. It should have a kitchenette. And then it should have the performance oven that's outside in the earth roofed area. Um, the goal is to broadcast 24 seven and have all kinds of anything, you know, I'd love it if singer songwriters were in there, the fire and everything. Um, and it's, uh, you know, encircled so that dogs can't come in, obviously dogs can be very annoying. Other parts of the broadcast center, let's get back to the geek spot. Uh, we should have audio only spots. I don't like that. I want everybody to be good enough for video. Um, we mentioned the collection and broadcast centrally of clips, but of course we want to invite people who have their own channels that they broadcast on. That's very important because also they may have more of an audience than we do and they can help gain uh, audience for us we can provide them with a visually different thing for their channel. Have an idea list for all the videos they could create while they were here. So if I was going to invite a YouTuber, I should have a list of inspirational things, perhaps with links to examples like music videos. We've had several here. I don't have one place that they're at. And so I need to be able to send them a thing that says, here's the genres we've done, all of them. You might be interested in the music one, you know, or I've done a lot of agricultural videos. And so we want to help people who come here because each person is their own photo studio, right? But we have to help them by telling them where the sets are, what times of day are best at that set, potentially, uh, make the weekly schedule of when we have what audio rules here. There are times of the year here where we fight, can, might use, for example, a weed whacker or a chainsaw. And ideally, we want to get it down to one to two days a week where we would do that. And I think we're at that now, actually. Um, usually, it's really quiet here. Um, we want to have days that we generally don't film and that the regular music and the regular rules don't all apply. That's a good day for someone to go out and play their violin in the woods or their flute or sit around here and do it. <coughs> Not right here because this is a quiet spot, but, you know, over there. Um, and then people can even tell other participants that they want to play and that people are welcome to listen. I'm losing my voice here. I've been talking so much.
So even the weekly schedule affects the noise. Uh, noise from town does happen, and we need to make the annual calendar of that. I need to have a calendar, Google uh, Calendar, that every time it's noisy in town, I mark down it was noisy and make it a recurring thing and say it was noisy in this year. And so you're using it as a journal at that point to know when they have the parties that are the most noisy. Some of them move around, like San Mano Santa moves around. And, you know, in most cases, we can't do anything about it. Um, and sometimes it's, you know, from when it's still dark out, rockets go off and bands start and they go until early in the morning. And you can hear it really well from here. Those would not be the best times to record things here. Also, that's copyrighted music. And if you could actually hear it well enough or a computer could process it, they'll make it so the clip you did, even if you thought it was good background music, that clip will become illegal to use. And if you use it in a, in a video, that clip, then it will cause the whole video to be non-monetized or unseeable. Don't ever put copyrighted music in videos. Uh, what else? Uh, the, that's an interesting point, actually, is that the broadcast center should be able to provide for people. In fact, I should be able to provide online so they can download it to everything before they even come here. Um, but have libraries of open source and creative commons media that we think is especially interesting. For example, with rain capture, I could collect uh, on the topic, I could collect clips that show that or make my own and, and then give them to the world either way. But if it's out there already and it's just a tiny clip that livens up a video visually and illustrates a topic, you know, if you're going to talk about a particular kind of bird, you want a picture of the bird and you don't want it to be a licensed one. Open source and creative commons. Creative commons, you need to credit the person. Uh, public domain is the best. If we can find public domain images and clips, and we should give some out to the public domain, although Creative Commons advertises the place, we get a little bit of credit maybe if people bother to credit us. They don't always do it. Um, we should be good about crediting people. It's just being polite. This person who provided the Creative Commons uh, artwork or, or work of art, music, speech, uh, writings, manual, instructional video, fun video, background video, whatever they gave away to us was very kind to them. And we want to here spew out free stuff about topics that we don't think are covered very well. So we should look up what are the Creative Commons uh, videos on everything that there is and images as well collect those into directories that are appropriately indexed, you know, by topic. And we should have a lot of topics. 